Alright, hello YouTube. Um, I know I said this was going to be, or my last video was going to be the last of the Prusa i3 by Foldertech build, uh, but I thought I'd go over some upgrades that you might want to consider after building the kit. I've had the, uh, the printer now for I think about a month uh, and have come across some some good things that people have built and also done some design work myself to try to to make some things um, more accurate, more efficient. Um, the biggest thing, which I'll talk about a little later in this video, is um, doing the auto leveling uh, on the i3 with the direct uh, drive extruder. But um, I guess the first thing I want to first thing I want to show you, or first thing I want to talk about upgrade wise. is, oh, let's talk end stops first, that's a good one. Um, end stop I'm using here, which you can see, it's kind of this little, uh, almost J-shape like item. Uh, it, uh, if you want to look up, or look it up on Thingiverse, it's number 85368, so you should be able to search for that and uh, get that. It holds the, um, the end stops, the mechanical end stops with the light trigger and all that, holds it nice in that slot, and then I just use a zip tie to uh, kind of make sure it doesn't fall out. But that's it's pretty nice. It clips on to your linear rods on the X, push it all the way to the extreme, uh, and it, it there's no need for adjustment really. It uh, it's pretty perfect as is. Um, the next thing I'm going to tell you or show you about is the Y end stop, and you have to bear with me here because I'm going to pull up my in process build of a wooden clone of this. But I want you to see it, and it's easier for me to show you than to spin that whole thing around. Um, there it is. You can see it kind of clips on right here. Uh, it has a couple of mounting holes. Also, that uh, is pretty perfect for uh, mounting your end stop in the Y direction and the little um, toggle, the little um, I guess they call it a shoe the little metal part that actually depresses the button on the end stop uh, hits perfectly right on the edge of the um, the heated bed so that, that that's pretty perfect as well you really don't lose much of anything um, space wise uh, and you're not requiring the extra necessary hardware for any kind of real adjustments. I know a lot of the different end stops have the ability to use screws so that you can uh, really dial things in. There's really no need. Um, if it just works, it's great and you know, keep it simple, right? Uh, the next thing that I, oh yeah, that Y end stop by the way, that number is 480635 if you're looking for it on Thingiverse. Thingiverse, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you, let me tilt the camera up a little bit. Um, yes, you can see I'm a Jags fan. I had to make these myself, the, the bearings, or the spool supports, because I needed some extra height. But at the, if you look on the top here, there's some great little bearing holders that, um, that a gentleman, I think a gentleman, made. Uh, for again the same purpose, uh, a spool mount. Uh, what I found is in his particular um, spool mount file, I, I think his frame was a little bit narrower on the top band, um, and I needed to extend it, so I just made my own. But those bearing mounts on top are actually pretty nice. Um, and then you just go buy a six-inch long, five-sixteenths bolt, go through two bearings, and now you're um, now your spool is, uh, has hardly any resistance whatsoever, and that's pretty nice. Uh, that number, if you're looking for the bearing holders, can be found um, at 78641 on Thingiverse. <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to show is... Let me spin this thing around a little bit. If you can look over here... 
see my fan. Well, I'll pull this off. Come on, let go. It's kind of fragile. There we are. Uh, I got an 80 millimeter fan right here with these little legs. Uh, it, really simple. Doesn't use a lot of uh, material. Serves its purpose. Just kind of clamps on the edges of the circuit board. Uh, it's nice to keep your stepper drivers uh, nice and cool. A millimeter fan will certainly do that. So if you're looking for that particular item, and they, if you go and do this search, you should be able to find different sizes as well um, uh, of fan brackets. But you're looking for number one six six zero five four on Thingiverse. And I found that that, you know, kind of keeps things nice. It also tidies up the wires a bit. Um, well, I say that, and there's this whole spaghetti mess underneath the fan. But it is certainly allowing those stepper drivers to uh, stay a little cooler, which is nice. Um, okay, since we're on the topic of end... Well, we were on the topic of end stops, and you can see it since I've turned here. I still have my... Uh, or a mechanical end stop on my z axis now, I will say certainly that having a Z-axis end stop is certainly better than not having one at all. But uh, if you look at the newest ramps, or not ramps, excuse me, the newest uh, Marlin firmware, and actually I think they've probably released a couple of firmwares since they implemented this feature, there's this thing called Auto Level now. Um, auto level is amazing. Um, it's something that they should really incorporate into more more designs. And I'm going to show you what that is first, and I'll show you kind of what I did to implement it. Now, I will say that auto level isn't just as simple as printing out a part and installing it and calling it good. Um, the first thing I had to do uh, after printing the parts, designing the parts, is you have to basically go through and edit your configuration H file all over again and make the new Marlin rev revision that was released match the same values than your past version uh, in this case the one that was released to me uh, from Foldertech. So you're copying the values that were in his file and then you're getting some extra capabilities within the new revision again that being auto level. Um, Okay, so what Auto Level does is, uh, and I'll show you here, it uses a servo and, a, and the micro switch. I use a different micro switch, but technically, if you wanted to, you could use the whole end stop circuit board and all that. Or you could mount the circuit board someplace and unsolder the micro switch off of it and mount it on the end. But, um,. Let's see here. Oh, I guess I gotta home things first. So we're gonna home this a little bit. And you're gonna see this in action first just for a Z height. What it does is it rocks down a an arm with that micro switch on the end and does a regular homing as you would expect, you know, the double tap in the Z direction. Um, so that's that. Great! Okay, now you can Z in any one place but that auto homing feature or auto leveling feature so great because what it will do is it's going to pulse in four different or probe in four different corners of your um, build plate it's going to get the the z heights on every one of those and they're going to be minuscule differences but it's going to get all of those and what it's going to do is in three dimensions inside the firmware is it's going to accommodate for any variation. So, if there's, if you're slightly high in the back corner, for example, as it's going in that direction, it will slightly start to raise the print head, so you have a uniform space between the print head or print surface and the build plate. So now I'll send the command for homing. You'll see exactly what this does. Um, I had to just regularly home at first, and then. Do this auto level. So what it's going to do is it's going to go to one extreme first, drop the arm, 
and, and to do a, a, a probe there with that double tap that it's you know kind of known for. Then it's going to scoot across to the other side and do the same thing. I'll let it do it for a second so you get the idea. So while it's doing that, I'm going to kind of show you what the components were that necessary to make that happen. Um, they're pretty popular on eBay right now. Um, I think I picked up about a few of these just because why buy one when you can buy three at tri three times the price. Um, these little, I think they're called Tower Pro. Let's see here. Yeah, Tower Pro 9 gram servos. You can see that. They're about two dollars and nothing really fancy or special about them. Uh, but you buy one of those um, and that's going to be your kind of control to uh, move that arm. The Ramps 1.4 board has servo controls, which is great. And now that they've implemented that in the firmware, that's how we're able to get this effect to work. So it's wrapping up here, um, doing the last probe. And then if you integrated the, it's the G29 command, integrated that in your uh, code pre-printing, uh, those numbers that it gathers from doing the auto leveling will then be integrated into your um, your G code for printing, and then again a much more level surface. Um, okay, so that's done, and then it would go on to print from that corner now where it's at. Um, if I was printing something, so again, need a little Tower Pro um, micro server or micro servo. Um, and then what I had to do, since this is a direct drive, or excuse me, a direct extruder, direct drive extruder, on the uh, Prusa, uh, there's no really great place to mount a servo. Um, so I had to make one, uh, or make a mount for it. And what I did was I chose to make a clamp that clamps around the NEMA 17 motor. Uh, in a... I didn't have a lot of space to work with um, this, the motors that come in this kit short of the one on the Y axis are pretty you know squatty so this is what I ended up with um, there it is. A, a clamp that's just as wide as the motor is up until where the plug plugs in um, and then a single screw with a nut keeper on one side. And I'm not going to push this in right now because um, it's a really tight fit on this side, but you kind of want a tight fit for your servo. But it would be on the other side, mounted in front. But your servo was going to mount right there. And then, you know, just a little cord keeper on top. Also, since my stepper motor is close to the extruder, this particular one on the extruder, actually close to the hot end. Uh, it does get warmer than all the other motors, so again, I put a bunch of air holes in that. Uh, so I'm really, really proud of this part. Um, it does a great job holding the servo in place. And the servo arm is, is or excuse me, the, the arm of that configuration. You can find a lot of those different ones on Thingiverse uh, if you look up auto leveling. But uh, the mounting bracket is something I just was not finding. Um, so I took a lot of time, uh, I'm, I don't know, I think I've printed off probably half a dozen of these things trying to make sure that it's right. Um, but I finally got it dialed in and it does allow for some much more amazing prints, especially with that auto level feature. Um, because now I'm getting less warping because I'm getting a uniform stick or print across everything. Uh, it's, it's really great. Um, I will say it's not super easy. Again, I had to make my own parts. Uh, I had to buy, you know, equipment. Uh, you had to reflash the firmware, and once you get the firmware installed, then you have to calibrate the thing, which is a process. Again, you can find it on YouTube. There's a couple of people who've done different tutorials on calibrating auto level. Um, 
but you basically have to find out what the offset is from where that micro switch is compared to where the print head is uh, and then you have to program that in your code once it's in the code it's great it's not going to be forgotten because it's in your firmware uh, but figuring that part out is a little a little tricky um, gosh what else have I done to this thing that's worth talking about um, not too much else new I, I'm thinking about making a um, a belt tensioner uh, the removing the original uh, belt pulley on the Y axis and putting a tensioner on there but uh, that means I have to take it apart not in really hurry um, besides there's those little spring belt tensioners that seem to work out all, all, work out all right um, lastly and I've said this in other videos get get one of the little um, LCD smart controllers these things are great that was thirteen dollars and then you can print out uh, whatever appropriate case is for the size of the, uh, the, the controller you got. They come in a couple different variations. Um, I think this one I got was from G-Tech, G-E-E-T-E-C-H, I think .com even. Um, again, that was an eBay item. Took a while to get here, direct from Hong Kong or something like that. But uh, it's really nice to have that um, SD card uh, available. I wish they would make a little bit longer um, encoder knob so that I could put something on there easier, but I think I'll end up drilling that out and making my own knob. Um, that's about it right now. I'm really starting to enjoy making my own parts for this. Uh, I'm starting to get better in CAD and three dimensions. I wasn't too bad in two dimensions um, but it, it's it's a lot of fun but I thought I'd share with you the the parts that I use to get my printer dialed in um, there's you know a bunch of you out there with this exact same printer or still even more out there with a very similar printer so to be able to give you an idea as to what I'm doing to maybe inspire you or to say oh that's what he uses to solve that problem that's great at some point in life, I will try to figure out what I'm going to do with all of this mess. It might just be as simple as running some elastic band up. But since the end stops on that side, I have to run a cable over there. End stops are only so long. No, the cables are only so long. So, um, right now it kind of looks ugly stretching across. But, it certainly does the job. I've printed out some great things with this now. Um, I would certainly put it up against some of the better printers out there, um, and this would probably wins hands down. Maybe not in speed, but accurately or accuracy, it's certainly there. Um, you know, everything is, is is calibrated, and the auto calibrations and things, it's even better. So, you guys have a good one, and I do think this will be my last for this series now. Um, unless I do another set of upgrades or something. Now I'm going to focus on, on my wooden i3 build, the wooden clone. And the next thing in my uh, to-dos for fun is a CNC router. So that should be, that should be happening. All right, you guys have a good one.